The second Tiny Tina's Wonderlands gameplay trailer is here, so let's jump into it and show all the things you might have missed and cover all the new information. This one's quite subtle, but in the Beanstalk you can see a missile, and if you look really closely you can see that it does say Magic Missile on that missile, and obviously that is a reference to Dungeons and Dragons. Right after you can see a locked chest, and it does look like it needs a code combination to open up. Here's a really cool one, enemies in this game have idle animations. The two skeletons here are fishing, and that might seem like a small detail, but considering all the previous Borderlands games, this is much cooler than enemies randomly walking around doing nothing. Creative director Matt Cox did release a dev diary for Tina's Wonderlands today, and in his writing he does mention Brighthoof. I believe that is the town we're looking at right here. And if you zoom into the front gate, you can see the letters BS, which could stand for everybody's favorite diamond pony, Butt Stallion. Shroom Booty. You remember those floating d20 dice in the first trailer? Well, turns out you can smack them with the melee and get loot out of them. In this scene, the HUD is disabled, so we don't actually know if you're rolling a number for better quality loot. But when the die busts open, a legendary spell of some sort is seen for a few frames. On the left side, you can see a ring, and as far as we know, this could be the new artifact or relic of the Wonderland series. Pop this on and you will likely get bonus stats. Going back to the developer diary, Matt does mention there's going to be new Hydra spells, and that will summon adorable little Hydras that will fight alongside you. It is said you can summon an army of these and bring them to combat. Also, we get a first look at the font used for damage numbers, and you can see the font is quite different from the other Borderlands games. Matt also mentions a place known as Sunfang Oasis, and it will be an optional region you can go to to explore different quest lines. Right off the bat, you can see statues that look like the mystical creature the Naga, which consists of a half-human, half-serpent-like body. Inside this temple will be traps, so you do need to be a little more careful of where you're walking into. Moving along here, we do get two class reveals, the first one being a Stabomancer, which is a blade-loving character that loves stealth. We do get a look at the Ghost Blade, which is an area of effect damage spell, but it is unknown if this spell is only used by the Stabomancer or if anybody can use it. With this spell, you will summon a giant purple spinning blade, and you can teleport it to any enemy you're looking at. Is this considered melee damage or something else? We'll have to wait and see on that. With the Stabomancer, you can use the From the Shadows action skill, and this will activate stealth mode and give you increased damage while stealth. This is very similar to Zero's Deception from Borderlands 2, or Flag's Fade Away from Borderlands 3. Either way, it does have a different animation, and it does look pretty cool. I also want to point out that when the user strikes the enemy, the Out of Shadows action skill does not end right away. You can also see an icon pop up which was confirmed to be a special melee mechanic. Matt does mention that melee is going to be a lot more than pressing one button for an attack. You will be able to equip a dedicated melee weapon to your character, and it will function more as a secondary in battle. These icons that pop up are part of a special mechanic, and it is said that it will give you action skill cooldown, spell cooldown, or even return ammo. At the start of the game, you can actually make your character from scratch, and this function is called the Fate Maker. Tina will allow you to pick your class and spec your hero points into what skills you want to have. With these hero points, you can put them more towards spells or melee, so you have full customization of how you want to make your character. Also, you can customize your banner, so each time you do an emote, you will be able to see your banner. For the second class reveal, we have the Berserker, and this character is going to be focused on cryo damage. With the Berserker, you can use the Feral Surge, and this allows you to slam into your enemies, freeze them, and shatter them into pieces. Each time you get a kill, you will start glowing red on the side of your screen, and I assume this is a special bonus for when getting a kill, so the more kills you get, the stronger you become. In third person, you can see the red aura glowing around the Berserker. The Berserker also has the Dread Wind attack, and that will allow you to spin and shatter your enemies into even more pieces. One more thing I want to mention about the Berserker is that the slam attack does look to be movement tech, so if you do want to travel faster or maybe even jump a gap, this action skill might be used for doing that. Right here we get teased by a legendary beam that is off screen, so we don't know exactly what that is. Shroom Booty. Again, we get a look at the idle animation of skeletons having a good time, and it really does add a lot of character to the world. Right at the end of the trailer we do see the polymorph action skill. Um, this is obviously something we're going to learn more about in the future, but for now you can see a tubby skag falling through a portal. We do know from the first trailer that this is going to be a spell or action skill, so I can't wait to learn more about that. Going back to Matt's developer diary, there is one more major thing that was revealed. As you know from the first trailer, we did get a look at the overworld, and this was confirmed to be how you're going to get around the game. The cool thing is, you can take whatever path you want on this overworld. You want to head to a temple? Head over there. You want to head to an icy biome? Head over there instead. Now, a path might be blocked off, so you might have to do something special to open it up, but yeah, you can explore this whole entire map. Not only that, there is going to be lootables and hidden areas around the map, so if you do some thorough exploration, you might find some secret dungeon or something. Matt also reveals there's going to be random encounters on the overworld, so as you're running around an enemy could be in your path. You can do two things. You can either run into the enemy and take them on for some good loot, 
or you can ignore them by slashing them with a melee attack on the overworld. Matt does state that if you do slash the enemy you will avoid the encounter, but any loot that the encounter might have dropped will not be gone. I think that's super cool and it does give me a Zelda 2 kind of vibe, so I'm really looking forward to how this is going to turn out. Anyways, that's going to be it for all the new information we got today, so if you want to watch the full trailer for yourself or read the developer diary, I will link those both in the description below. So yeah, you guys have a great day and I will see you all next time. Peace out.